Hoya Mora. I'm John Sloat. I'm a hydrologist with Sontec YSI, and I'm here today on the Pongolo River in South Africa, near the border of Swaziland and Mozambique. Today we're going to be talking about measuring river discharge using the new river surveyor M9 and S5. Okay, when you receive your river surveyor system, it's been designed to come equipped with everything that you need to make the river discharge measurement. The first thing that when you open the box, the first thing that you're going to notice is that you're going to see some quick start manuals right here. I highly recommend that you take a chance to, to review these. In these manuals, they talk about the different components that are in this that come with the box. They talk about attaching it, some, some quick remarks about actually how to make a measurement with the system, some techniques. So a little bit more to the parts. It has the ADP. If you've ordered it with GPS, it's going to come with a GPS with a mast and with a mount that attaches directly to the top of the ADP. It'll also come with a power control module. The power control module houses the power supply for the ADP, the GPS, again if you've configured it that way, and the telemetry. You have two options for telemetry, that's spread, spe spread spectrum radios or Bluetooth. The power control module is, is powered through a rechargeable power supply. The power supply is designed to last approximately three to four hours of continuous use in the field and we've designed it also to be easily changed in the field. You can see I'm just going to take one out here. You can do this all with one hand and I'm powered on ready to go. To charge the batteries we have a rechargeable, power, uh, a rechargeable power supply. We have a battery cradle right here. We set the battery in the cradle, plug the charger into our power, and a status indicator light will tell us what state of the charging is in. For, for a fully discharged battery, it takes about two hours to charge. If you've ordered the system with Bluetooth, there's two ways that you can use the Bluetooth telemetry. The first way is using uh, the, your mobile device. Here in, in this case we have the River Surveyor Live software preloaded onto this device. We simply power on this device and it connects to the, it connects to the River Surveyor and we can do our measurement. The second way that you can connect to the River Surveyor S5 or M9 with Bluetooth is using a Bluetooth, what we call a Bluetooth dongle. In this case, here's the, here's the dongle, here's the power cord and the antenna. Depending upon the, my, my configuration of my laptop, I can plug this directly into the serial port and this provides for communication and this provides power to the Bluetooth dongle. If I don't have a serial port, most computers these days are coming with all USBs. The system also comes with a USB to serial converter. So I'll plug this side into one USB and I'll plug this into the second USB and this is what I'll use to communicate with the river surveyor. This dongle has a range of approximately 200 meters. The phone has a range of approximately 60 meters. If you're not going to, if you're not going to use telemetry to communicate with a river surveyor, it also comes with a 10 meter cable. Again, this plugs directly into the M9 and using these, this is the power, the AC power adapter or power connector. Here's for the GPS if I want to use an external GPS and they, again this would plug into my laptop or this serial USB converter. Of course to have the GPS when I mount my GPS, I'm also, it's also going to come with a cable that connects the GPS directly to the power control module. Okay, so here we have a, a very, a, a very high-grade antenna. This antenna connects to the GPS receiver inside this power control module. The last cable that, the, the next cable that comes with the system, this cable is used to con, con, connect the power control module with the River Surveyor M9. I'm going to go through a, a setup 
in a little in a little bit showing you how to connect all the cables together but again the idea here is that when I or when you order a system it's going to be complete what I have in front of me right now is a is a complete system set up so I'm going to just take you through a little bit of the parts and show you how the cables connect and how it all works together. I'll show you the bottom of this. Now this is really the business end of the of the profiler. Let me just explain a little bit about what we what we're looking at here. What we have here is the transducer head. This is where the actual measurement of water velocity and depth takes place. Once we make the measurement here, all the data is processed and stored inside of the ADP housing and then transmitted to the, to the onshore computer. Let me talk to you a little bit about this configuration. It's very unique. It's a multi-frequency, multi-array transducer. Right here, when we developed this system, we integrated several technologies. The first, of course, is, the, is for the velocity and depth measurement using these outer transducers and a lower frequency transducer to make a, a measurement with a vertical beam. So what we have here is a 500 kilohertz echo sounder. Around, its, uh, around the echo sounder we have the four yellow beams you see here are three megahertz transducers in a Janus configuration. They have a range of six meters. We have, a, we have one megahertz transducers right here. They have a, range, a, a measurement range to about 45 meters. The echo sounder, the vertical beam in the center has a range to about 80 meters. Here I'm going to give you a little bit better look at the M9. Okay, again here's this multi-frequency, multi-array transducer head. We're measuring water velocity with the outer beams. In the shallow depths we're using the high frequency 3 megahertz beams. In the deeper depths we're using the 1 megahertz beams. The center beam is what we're always using and we're actually operating the echo sounder simultaneously in depths from about 25 centimeters to well over 80 meters. Everything's inside. Compass tilt roll sensor, temperature sensor, and there's even an internal recorder. This is a little bit of a unique design in, in the fact that actually all the measurements are made, made on the instrument itself. So that avoids any telemetry types of losses if I'm using radio telemetry. The other instrument that we have, second to this, is called the S5. Okay, the S5, again, very similar but slightly different shape. Okay, and in this case we have five transducers. We have a center beam, which is an echo sounder, it's one megahertz. The outer beams, which we use to measure water velocity and depth, are three megahertz. So with the S5 I can collect data from 25 centimeters to about six meters of depth for river discharge. That can actually extend a little bit deeper if I use the echo sounder which has a range to 15 meters. Okay, so here's how we collect the data. We can collect the data using one of two devices. First is the handheld mobile data collection device. It comes with the river surveyor with the software already loaded. The software on, the, on, on this device is, is a complete data collection software. The next way I can collect my data is with a laptop. So again, we have Windows River, River Surveyor Live Windows software that we collect with the PC. We have River Surveyor Live also on the data collection device right here.